Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbit Tree Center and today we are going to go over how we help our rabbits through the hot days of the summer. Uh, it's amazing to me how we can use solar panels and use solar energy to pull so much power to run all these fans and charge our batteries and never ever have to pay for energy. I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. I'm going to show you what I use and how to hook it up. Here we go. This is our solar panel stand. I built this the other day. The solar panels are measured in watts. The batteries measured in volts. We're talking 12 volt. And the computer fans are measured in amps. So, oh, wonderful. I'm standing on ants. Great. Well, I'll have to talk faster. So, what you want to do is figure out how many fans you need. Okay, and I recommend a 0.25 amp fan or a 0.3 amp fan because that's strong enough where the, the rabbits can actually feel the, 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 the breeze. Now, so for example, I'm going to have to move. The, these ants are biting me. So, okay, is this recording? Yes. I can't, it's so bright today. It's another 85 degree day. And that's why we're talking about these fans because it's so hot and the, and the rabbits really love these fans. So let's talk about it. It's, it's pretty simple once we figure out what we're dealing with here. We're, we're dealing with 12 volt deep cell batteries. Okay, that's, that's a battery that can go up and down and uh, it will last you. It, it's perfect for charging. So 12 volt deep cell battery. We need a simple solar charge controller. They, th that's the second thing. They have lots of different kinds of solar charge controllers and some of them are really confusing, some of them are really expensive and really you just need a basic, simple solar charge controller. This one I think is 10 bucks that I recommend. I'm gonna link all this stuff in the description uh, so you don't have to go looking around for it. And I am a, a Amazon affiliate so if you use that, um, I do get a little bit of credit. I really appreciate that. So, um, and it's at no cost to you guys. So Amazon pays that. So, so three is going to be our whatever we're running. Fans, lights, in this case we're running fans. And on the solar charge controller, it's really cool. There's, there's pictures that shows how to hook, where to hook everything up. So it's really simple. So there's a light bulb and that's what we wire our fans up to. So, so what we're gonna use for fans, I recommend a 0.3 amp fan or 0.25. You know, it's a, just a fraction less powerful, but that's enough where the, the rabbits can actually feel uh, the wind. So how we find out how much power we'll need is basically you just multiply, it's a simple math problem, you multiply the volts by the amps of the computer fan. So 12 times 0.3, we're gonna get 3.6 watts of power needed. Now say we have, say we buy a 30 watt solar panel. Now all these solar panels are, are sold in different power sizes, you know, 10 watt, 15 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt, and so on, all the way up to 100, and, or it goes way up. But what all you really need is, a, depending on how many cages you have, so if this is just an example, say we have four cages that we wanna put fans in. So at 3.6 watts, if we were to run two of them, then that would be 7.2. If we were to run four, it'd be 14.4. .4. So a 30 watt, solar panel is half of that power is going to go all to running the fans and the other half why I recommend that you double the power because the other half will go to your battery so your battery will always be charging it will always be in great shape with the solar charge controller it will always send the appropriate amount of power to where to the fans and your battery so nothing overloads so that's how we figure our power So step one is just hooking the solar panel up. Now some solar panels come with cords on the back of them. Others have a little um, junction box that you just have to hook up the positive and the negative, red for positive, black for negative. So one side is for positive and the other side is for negative. And basically I hook up one panel to one side positive and then the other goes over here on the negative. So one panel gets wired they're positive on this side, negative on this, this side. The next solar panel, same thing. I just move over the next terminal and then I take these two terminals and take those to the solar charge controller. 
and so once you hook up your solar panel run it to your solar charge controller that's the first thing and, and there's a, a picture for your solar panel easy hook to screw in so the thick 16 gauge wire that I recommend um, it's you know some would say it's an overkill but it actually has I like it because it's right around the same price and it has a thick protective coating that's what I really like about this this wire so at the very beginning when you start to wire your solar panel wire strippers and strip the wire like that really simple just make sure you want to use the right hole so you're not cutting into any wire so once I'm done with everything I also wrap this wiring because I like this wire because it's got the protective coating but I also like this because it, it it's that extra insurance that everything stays in good shape and you know it's right by the water bowl so I just want to make sure no water's getting near it so that's kind of an overkill too you don't necessarily have to do that either I add on little fork terminals to make it easier to hook everything up and you know disconnect it at the end of the season so so hook up your solar panel now hook up again I use little fittings uh, for the battery to make everything simple and easy to hook up so now once you have your battery hooked up so we've hooked up our solar panel we hooked up our battery now keep in mind the shorter you keep your wires the the stronger your power will be it's actually like every for every foot of distance you know the longer the wire the less power you'll have it actually drains and you know drags on the or leeches or whatever you want to call it on the power so try to keep your, your lines as short as possible angle your solar panels facing south okay so we've hooked up our solar panels and our batteries and now all we have to do is hook up our fans but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our fans up to the terminal blocks so on the solar charge controller there's only one spot for your light bulb or whatever you want to power so how we hook all the fans up to it is we take this terminal we have we actually have two terminals and the, the one for positive side and one for I'm sorry one for positive this is the red and then one for the negative and we take the la the first two and we wire that we take this over to our solar charge controller okay and that's how we send power to everything so these are kind of like just like a power strip okay or a, or a hub of power so everything that connects to this is gonna have power so that's how we do it this you know our first our first terminal will be, will be dedicated to the solar charge controller. That's how we get power to these terminals. And then we start hooking our fans up. Our first fan will be on the second terminal. And then the third fan will be on the third one out. And that's how we, we keep going. And that's how you connect all your fans. I hope that makes sense. If anybody has any questions, um, I, I'll try to explain that further. But that's, but that's it. That's using those terminal blocks. That's how you can connect all your fans. Now the last part, none of this power is strong enough where it can shock you and electrocute you. It's just, it's not that strong. It's only strong enough to run these baby fans. So, so don't worry about that. But, so this is the last part about it. We need to be able to shut all this off at night. Because if we don't, if we hook all this up, it's going to run until the battery dies completely. And maybe the battery will run through the first night and make it till the, the next sunny day and the battery will charge a little bit, but you wanna be able to shut it off and, and save power at night and only run it when these fans are needed. And if you come out in the morning and turn them on, they should, you, know, you should never have to worry about your battery charging. So it's important to you know, double the, the, the power and put in this power switch. And how you put in the power switch is that wire, the first wire that we hook up to the solar charge controller take that wire and the negative goes straight to the solar charge controller but the positive gets wired to the bottom of a light switch any single pull regular light switch just wire that wire to the light switch and then take another wire that's about 12 inches about one foot and wire that to the top of the light switch and send that to the positive side of the solar charge controller okay now I know that's some basic wiring but all you're doing that that line you're just interrupting that's basically what a light switch is I mean in the wall of your house there's there's a black a neutral and a ground you'll notice that all your light switches in, in the houses and homes are only wired to the positive or the hot 
because all you're doing is interrupting. It's just like power, you know, look at that light switch like a hallway of power and that's, when you turn that light switch off, you're closing the door. Nobody can walk down that hallway. When you turn it on, you're opening the door and power can go down the hallway. So that's basically what you're doing with that wire. You're just interrupting it. So you need to wire that switch for an interruption. And then that way you can save your battery power and everything is gonna work better. <laughs> Trying to work here. So these fans all come with three wires. It's a black, yellow, and red. And you can take this or this yellow and just cut it right off. And once you get the chicken, you, you see these little holes in the corner. Once you get the chicken wire through the corners, you literally can just hang it right on, right on your cage. And what they like to do is they like to come out here, have a drink, and then they stand right in front of the fan with the wet. Uh, with their fur wet and it just kind of cools them right off. I can't imagine what it would be like with a fur coat when it's 90 degrees and so I really recommend kindling totes and, and frozen bottles and of course these computer fans I think they just work great and you don't have to pay a thing for them. You know, once, you, once you cry once, pay once, um, once you get all your equipment then from here on out it's just free energy and uh, I really think it's that, that little edge that the rabbits need to get through those hot summer days. You know, as everybody who has rabbits out there knows summers are a lot harder on rabbits than the winter time is. So I hope this video helps somebody out there. And if you have any questions on the installation, hookup or products, please leave your questions below and I will contact everybody. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.